Hello, this is analysis of the game from the 7th round of Turkish Championship in Antalya. Uh, today my opponent was Grandmaster Kvanch Haznadarov. And uh, I started my game with e4 and decided to play my main openings. Kvanch played e5. It was very, very difficult to prepare for him because he uses all kinds of, all kinds of openings. He plays several Sicilian openings, he plays d6, c6, French defense, e5, he plays Rai Lopez and he also plays Berlin defense. So it was not uh, possible really to check all these lines and I just decided to rest and see what will happen in the game. So the line I normally play here is bishop takes c6 on the fourth move. Uh, exchange variation it doesn't have great reputation. It is considered that black can equalize the game quite easily. But uh, still, I, I my opinion is that white can try to to pose serious problems for black here. Of course, uh, in case of good uh, play, black can achieve equal position. But it's not uh, that easy. And okay, d takes c6 is normal move. I castle. And here there are many options for black. My idea is to take the pawn on e5. It was not possible to take immediately. Because after queen d4, I have to move my knight. Black regains the pawn. And now, in, in an ending such as this one, for example, I don't have any advantage absolutely because uh, on king side structure is same and on queen side my four pawns are not better than my opponent's three pawns. His uh, pawns might, might be uh, doubled but uh, there's nothing much I can do really in some endgame and until endgame I still have to play a lot. He, my opponent now has two bishops. So this is kind of structure that I want to avoid and that's why I cannot take the pawn on e5. Uh, when I was younger I used to play move knight c3 but uh, in the last five years or so, maybe even more, I switched to castle which is a better move. Of course it requires some serious time to analyze all these lines because uh, black has many options here and uh, today Crunch chose bishop g4 which is one of the main lines actually. After h3 black has two possibilities. One is to... well it, it is not uh, really that great to take on f3. I don't say that black's position is uh, lost here or something, but uh, now white got what he wanted. He has some small advantage and white will probably try to uh, organize f4, then have a bit stronger center and some chances to attack on f file or to maneuver with his pieces. Generally this position is pleasant. So black can either play bishop h5 or protect this bishop with a pawn. After bishop h5, white doesn't really have a choice. He has to go for g4, bishop g6, and knight takes e5. Uh, this is a very interesting line. And uh, after Carlsen used it in his game, uh, actually it became quite popular. It goes something like this. And now black tries to use weak square uh, f4 to well here black's king will be very safe he doesn't have to cast immediately i just made this move to illustrate the idea and generally black wants to put his pawn to g5 knight will come to g6 bishop will come to b6 and um, somehow it's not very easy for white to do something this position is uh, playable it is normal and it is really interesting. But uh, in our today's game, Kwan chose the main line, h5. 
d3 is more or less only move and black goes queen f6 now white has two, two main options one is to play bishop e3 and allow black to destroy white's pawn structure after these moves well there are several ways how black can play and uh, probably position still it might be a bit better for white but uh, I think it is not very difficult uh, to play with black and uh, good players already know where to put their pieces and uh, I normally use the other move knight bd2 which is a bit more complicated now knight e7 is normal rook e1 knight g6 and uh, well I'm not uh, commenting on move h takes g4 this move is generally not good otherwise of course I would take peace but uh, the problem is black has very strong attack on h file combined with bishop c5 his position is always good or even winning in this moment white should push d4 that's what I did now again black has um, some options main move is knight f4 the move that uh, Kvanch used rook d8 is a very very interesting try uh, I got surprised once by Sandy Pan who used this move in our game in Greece some years ago but okay the position is of course interesting and playable and uh, knight f4 is the main line after this white has two options uh, I took the bishop on g4 other possibility is to take the pawn on e5 and after queen g6 to play knight h4 black has to go for bishop d1 knight g6 knight takes g6 rook takes d1 well black now can choose he has a he can either castle or just put his rook to d8 let's say he plays rook d8 <coughs> and now white sometimes gives this extra pawn after f takes e6 white can go rook e1 for example still white is trying to prove that he has some advantage but in this position black's pieces become very active and white somehow cannot manage to complete his development without spoiling his pawn structure so the position generally is accepted as ok for black and that's why I take on g4 and then I push g3 main line for black and the only good move is taking on f3 uh, knight h3 is much weaker it used to be played a lot but now players understood how to what to do with white pieces and it is no longer used in, in strong games now g takes f3 queen takes f3 and knight e6 is the main line now unfortunately white cannot just exchange queens because uh, now it has problems with d4 square black's knight is going to come to d4 after for example d e5 black doesn't take back on e5 then white will have advantage but instead black goes knight d4 why cannot stop knight c2 and uh, this position is even better for black so white has to take on e5 and after queen e5 now white has some options move queen f5 used to be the main line but uh, knight b3 is actually a better move and gives white more chances to um, make some advantage well I, I should also mention another interesting move here queen h6 that was played by Michael Adams this is also a very interesting move after knight b3 black plays g5 and uh, this also gives a complex game 
and uh, can be analyzed. So okay, queen takes e5. Now instead of queen f5, I play knight b3, which I think is the best move. And uh, Crunch decided to repeat bishop d6 move that was used by Gabriel Sargisian in our last year's game in Serbian league. Uh, here castle is not uh, great because white can take uh, pawn on f7 and now there are some wild variations but it seems like white uh, can get really good position and uh, g6 with idea to stop queen f5 was used several times uh, and Karyakin played in his games against Alexei Shirov move bishop d2 and he was successful. Well, maybe it's possible for black to defend this position, but it's not very pleasant. Still, maybe black can survive if he defends correctly. Uh, so here, Kvanch played bishop d6, he prepared this line, and it is a good line actually. Um, black is developing a piece to a nice square and he's actually waiting to see white's move because uh, now in my game with Sergisian I played queen f5 and uh, Sergisian played a very very strong move queen b5 now black will be able to push g6 and make white take on b5 I think my game went on like this, g6, and after exchange, now black improved his pawn structure very very much, also he wants to push b4 now and then make uh, really a target out of pawn on a2, so white will have to lose even some time to put this pawn to, to a not so great square, now black can always organize some play on the queen side, his rook can enter from a4, and uh, White's advantage on king's side is not that important anymore. Uh, so, queen f5 is not that great for white, and uh, maybe it's possible to play c3. This is one possibility that needs to be tested. But in today's game, I chose more king g2. My idea is also to wait. I'm making a a useful move and waiting myself as well because okay for black maybe he can cast but it's a bit risky I don't have to take the pawn on f7 but I might so I, I wanted to check if my opponent will be ready for this he can continue with rook f8 queen g4 for example rook f6 queen g4 and I'm not sure what happens here exactly this needs to be analyzed very carefully. White has uh, one extra pawn, but it's it can be very similar to two extra pawns on king's side. And uh, <coughs> black uh, must prove that he has something because if white manages to complete his development with, let's say, c3, bishop e3, and then play rook h1, he will win the game very easily. So, after king g2, um, Crunch decided not to castle, he, he spent much time and he played g6 instead, and after this move, I can play bishop d2, similar to Karyakin games. Now my bishop has a very nice square on c3 and black has to do something about this. He absolutely had to play queen g7, that's what he said after the game, and uh, he's ready to exchange bishops, for example, like this. Now I have to think about my pawn, I will maybe play c3, black, uh, well, my position here might be slightly preferable because I have better uh, pawn structure on king's side, and uh, I have extra pawn on king's side actually, while Black's pawn on queen side is not so great, but still maybe black's pieces are centralized and uh, 
maybe this position is not so bad for him. Well, here maybe I can also consider move rook a to d1. But then I must uh, be sure that I will have something after bishop c3. For example, b takes c3. Now black cannot castle anymore, but maybe he can play with his queen on e5. Maybe this position is not bad for him. So, in this position maybe I don't have to go bishop c3 at all. Knight a5 is another option. Then black can castle. If I go queen b3, luckily for him he has knight c5. But this move saves him and his position is good now. So, I don't know what I would do. In any case, Clunch chose move queen h5 here. Which is, I think, not a very good move because uh, when queens are exchanged my, posi exchanged, my position is definitely better. It is just a question if black will be able to survive. So now it was very easy to exchange immediately the queens. And also I can use this moment while black rook cannot protect his other rook to play rook h1. And force black, I mean black cannot allow me to take and have another weak pawn on h5. So he must take and after rook takes h1 he has even more problems now. He cannot castle, I mean maybe he can but now his pawn on f7 needs protection. and. I think he wanted uh, to protect this pawn with his king, so Kalanchi decided to play bishop e5 here. Now he's covering h8, he's also attacking my pawn on b2, but this is not a very big problem. I just play c3 and uh, I don't have to think about this pawn anymore. And now Kalanchi made a decisive mistake, I thought. He played the uh, rook d8 really quickly and after f4 he moved his bishop back to g7 well I thought this was really bad because his position was worse uh, but uh, he could still fight and I think that maybe his idea was after f5 to play knight c5 because he didn't stop uh, long enough to think about this position. Now it looks like uh, I cannot take on c5 because of rook d2 and uh, I can just move my bishop somewhere. Then black can exchange on b3 or maybe he can even think about knight d3 or knight takes e4. So knight c5 looks like a powerful move but unfortunately for black I have bishop g5 attacking his rook and now he must try to attack my bishop with f6 then I can take on c5 and after pawn takes well there are many options here rook h7 or knight e6 pawn takes g6 position is now I will at least win one pawn maybe two and position is completely win so I think he missed this move and in position that was worse but not hopeless and after f5 his position now is probably lost he he cannot play to c5 so he had to go back to f8 now there is another nice move bishop g5 I'm attacking his rook and uh, this rook it doesn't have good squares because if it goes to d7 well I, I will play actually f6 and win the bishop so the only square rook can move to is d6 then I can play bishop f4 attacking the rook and also pawn on c7 so if he wants to protect he has to go rook d7 now I can use also a nice square for my knight Black doesn't have any other square, he has to go to e7. And now I can think what to do. Maybe I can simply come closer with my king, like this, protect the pawn. Or maybe I can take some pawn on the queen's side. I have a really pleasant choice here, and position is very close to winning. 
but so f5, knight f8, bishop g5. Black has other move f6, which is actually best move and his only chance, but position is really bad. Now I have one more tempo bishop f4, I'm attacking the pawn on c7. And uh, it's very difficult to protect his pawn, actually. The only way rook b7 is not good, because knight comes to c5 for tempo. So the only way to protect this pawn was rook c8. And then again my knight can come to c5, attacking b7 and also a6. So this position is really bad. And Kalanj chose... He understood that it was too late to defend position passively. He tried to activate his pieces a bit, which was a good choice. At least to create some small chances. He exchanged an f5 and then he put his rook to d5. Attacking my pawn. And... Uh, I decided to protect this pawn because this pawn is very nice. It's limiting his knight on f8. And... Uh, after this... Probably, I, I thought, well, probably my idea is now to push c4 and make this rook go to some square, then jump maybe to c5 with my knight, with tempo. Black cannot play king d7, because after c4, only square will be d3, and then after knight c5, I win the rook. So it's difficult to find a move for black actually here. Knight d7 is... similar because it's taking away this square this important square and I'm not sure here I can just take the pawn on on c7 maybe I even have better ways to proceed here and my position is probably any okay uh, Crunch tried with a5, he wanted to maybe complicate the position a bit. And now I checked first on e1, because I understood that if he goes to d8, which was maybe his intention, I thought this was his in intention, then I can play c4, and after rook d3 I can take the pawn on a5, also threatening to take other pawn on b7 with check, and this is just terrible for black. So he had to go to f7. And uh, again I pushed c4. And after rook d3. I, I just took the pawn on a5. And now I want to win some more pawns. Black's position seems to be losing. I was expecting here something like knight b7. I was mostly thinking about this move and then I can take the pawn on b7. And after knight e5 for example, I can just exchange and maybe push g5. Now I will also play f6, I will take pawn on e5 in some good moment, so black's position is lost. And uh, okay, Crunch played a bit better here than I thought. Then I he played move uh, rook d4, and uh, now it was somehow logical to play king f3, which I did. Maybe I should have spent some more time here because. Uh, After knight h7, well, it, my position is still winning. After knight h7, I... Well, black now has idea to jump to g5 with his knight. And uh, after this I will be forced to take 
then his bishop will become a bit active, but still I have um, enough pawns in um, my position is easily winning. Uh, at first I wanted to play rook e4, then I changed my mind and I was about to take the pawn on b7. And then I changed my mind again, because after knight takes b7, knight g5, black wants to maybe use f4 for his rook. Now my pawns are hanging a little, so I was thinking about move rook e4 mostly, and now he can come with his rook to d2. The, the rook is good here. Okay, my position is of course winning, but I decided to try to win one tempo here by playing first rook e4 in this position. Because if I exchange rooks, uh, the game is over. So, now black cannot come with his rook to d2. And uh, if he goes to d1, which happened in the game by the way, I can play knight uh, b7 and after knight g5 in this exchange position will be similar, but black had to go to d1 with his rook, which is worse square. And uh, I was happy about this. So I was mostly considering rook d8. Now I take the pawn, rook b8. I have to give pawn on b2. But after knight c6, it seems that my position is winning because knight d8 is a very strong threat. I'm two pawns up at the moment, and the only thing that worries me is what will happen if black takes another one, another pawn. But in this position I have rook e7 or knight d8, this, both of these moves look great. Uh, I was thinking mostly about knight d8. Now if black goes to f8 I can check and just, if there's nothing better, just take on g7 and also take on c7. I have two extra pawns and very nice active position, it's easily winning for me. And, uh, If black goes to g8 instead, then I can maybe check on e8. I thought black would have to cover the bishop, then I can go bishop h6 maybe. Well, I have other options as well. There are many options in this position. Now I want to uh, exchange on f8 and then play knight to e6. So my position is when I was sure. Still I, I thought black should probably try to play like this. But Quanch played rook d1. And after knight d7 he checked on g5. Now of course I was planning to take on g5, but here I noticed that I don't have to take immediately. I can play king e2 first. He cannot take my rook because I take his rook and with uh, two extra pawns, probably it's going to be three extra pawns soon, I will win easily. Black cannot play knight f2 and knight g4 because after king f3 he doesn't have a place for knight. I mean, he can jump to e5, but uh, he will lose one more pawn. Well, I can start even with king e4 maybe, or maybe like this, I'm not sure. Mm. Okay, maybe he will not lose any more pawns, but with so bad bishop, I have a, a pawn. His position is completely hopeless. So, after king e2, he had to go somewhere with bishop with his rook. And b8 is a sensitive square, so normally he wants to cover this square. And he should come to d7. But the problem with this square is that I can go knight c5. I still don't move my rook. Now black rook has only one square. And in this position I can even continue with knight e6. Of course maybe it's, it's better to take on g5 now. And after black recaptures I can now play knight e6, then take also g5 with check and it's over. So, instead of this, Crunch played rook b1, 
then I check to b8, king g8, I checked one more time and after king h7 I decided it was time to exchange and then I just played knight e6, it's a nice square for the knight. Black will probably take on b2 with check, it is his only try and then I come to f3 with my king. Now I want to play rook e7 and win the bishop and also I want to take pawn in g5. Black has two ways to protect both pawn and bishop and if he goes bishop f6 I will play rook f8 and now bishop cannot protect the pawn any longer because after bishop e7 rook f7 I win the bishop. So the other try is bishop h6 but this uh, move looks really funny. After check black will probably go to g8 then I can push f6 I will win the bishop for this f pawn and or I can choose some other winning plan. This position is hopeless as well. So after knight e6 Kvanch decided to resign the game. And now let's check from the beginning and let's try to see if uh, there were some major mistakes in the game. So Let's start from here, h5, b3, rook e1, knight g6, b4, knight f4, knight b3, Bishop d6. So, computer thinks black has better position. Of course, this is not correct because black's uh, activity is somehow only temporary here, and white has long term advantage on the king's side. And machines somehow fail to evaluate this kind of positions correctly. So, king g2. It's maybe a new move, but quite a normal move. And uh, g6, maybe not the best. We should be two. And here, queen g7 was the correct move, as Crunch said after the game. He was about to play this move, but then, for some reason, he decided to go queen h5. He got worried about some line and he decided to exchange queens and now after this his position is really difficult. Rook h1 he has to take and bishop e5 is okay, c3, rook d8. Hmm. This is not so easy to say if this move is okay but after f4 definitely bishop g7 is a mistake and it is a big mistake after this. Black's position is probably losing. He had to go bishop f6 for these tactical reasons. So now I wouldn't have f5 move because now black can can jump to c5. So I wouldn't push the pawn to f5. I would try to play slowly, come to with my king to f3, bishop to e3, then maybe push e5, then come with my king to e4, push g4, f5, and so on. This position is much better for white, but still. Uh, there is some play and uh, of course if black defends he might be able to save the game but after bishop g7 I don't believe black can survive anymore g5 and now as you can see knight of 8 is almost the only move bishop g5 was good again at 6 is practically forced. Bishop f4 is a good move. Now rook c8 according to the machine is best but it's somehow depressing to play like this and I understand Kvanch completely. He tried to play some more forcing moves 
and now g4 is moved at i played, I considered c4, I must say, rook f5, I noticed that black rook doesn't have moves on 5th rank, but I didn't see this idea. I didn't understand how I was going to win this rook. Let's say black goes knight g6, stop my g4. <coughs> I simply go king e4, and after knight e7, now I push g4. So this was a very nice way to play. Still, I don't know, I, I cannot say my way is worse. I thought there was no, no need for such things, but it was a nice way to, to play. To sacrifice the pawn, then play king f3, and next move is king e4, and it seems... Okay, my other threat is g4, seems like black cannot stop this. So maybe it was even better to continue like this, c4. Maybe it was really nice. I. I was pretty sure my position was winning here, so I wasn't calculating such things too much. But uh, I must agree that maybe it was better. Well, black can play something like king d8, what computer suggests. And I, I thought I would play c4 here. Well. He, his position is really depressing, he has to go to d7, now his knight doesn't have any squares, his bishop doesn't have any squares, my king can come closer, my knight can jump to c5, position is really hopeless. But I must admit that maybe it was better to play c4 here. Ok, g4, back pushed a5, check on e1. C4 again, better according to the machine. Well, not too much, but maybe even much. Let's see what is the difference. After rook d3, I take now an e5. And why is it better to do this without rook e1? Because maybe, maybe because black doesn't have knight h7. Can this be the reason? I don't understand what is the difference because both positions look winning. So let's see if there is something wrong with rook e1. King f7. Now c4. Rook d3, knight a5, I simply thought this position was completely winning. I, I even don't understand why computer gives me so, so small numbers here. 1.27, it's not what I expected. King f3 only plus 1, and I had to go bishop c7, I really don't understand the machine. How can you be so optimistic for ah. So there is rook f4 mode. Wow, this is really nice. I really missed this idea. Bishop h6 and bishop b2. So maybe black gets some chance here. Does he? Well, I must say that it was uh, really not uh, very professional the way I played here. I missed such a huge thing, so now I, I'm losing material and luckily I can win probably still with rook b1 and b4, and after bishop b6 I will push c5, bishop has to go to a7. I believe this position is still quite easily winning, maybe even by force rook b1 to stop his knight from coming or just rook b3. Yes, rook b3, let's say knight b7, rook a3, bishop has to go to b8, 
is a little bit funny. But still okay, maybe maybe it's not totally over. Okay, it must be over actually. The bishop buried on b8. I think I actually prefer to go with my king to d4 and then move my rook to h3 and then push also my a pawn to a5 to completely bury the black's bishop and after this I can even sacrifice my rook sometimes for his knight or maybe not. Well okay I'm sure this position is winning but the thing is that I was uh, lucky that it's, that it's winning and that I missed a huge thing here. I missed move rook f4. Position is of course completely winning and I, I had to think only about such things. The only thing that can go wrong here is that I uh, lose a piece because if I lose some pawn, position is still winning. So this was a really a big mistake, but okay, I was lucky that I am still winning even after that. Okay, after king f3, knight h7, he, he didn't see this, so he missed his chance. I played rook e4, which is a good move. Rook d1, okay, it doesn't really matter because black's position is lost. Knight takes b7. Knight g5. King e2 is normal. Okay, both moves are okay. Rook b1. Knight d8. King g8. Rook e8 is ok, king h7, bishop takes, pawn takes, and b3 is the move suggested by machine, but ok, knight e6 is of course good enough. Ok, I, Crunch is uh, really a strong player, he, he has won two big tournaments recently and uh, well, I, I'm of course happy that I managed to win the game. I think. Uh, I was lucky that after the opening he, he decided to exchange queens. I, I was really lucky there because uh, I don't think he would do this on his normal day. I think this was a bad day for him and uh, after this normally I should win without any problems. Well, I did make one. Well, I can even talk about two mistakes probably uh, the moment when I protect my pawn with the g4. Probably it was better to calculate patiently move c4 and make sure that I'm winning exchange and practically the game would finish right there. Well, this was uh, 10 moves ago. Instead of that I played g4. Ok, position is still winning, it's not a big mistake. But when I missed, rook takes f4 and bishop h6, bishop d2, tactical shot. This was a big mistake and I, I'm only lucky that position after that was yeah, still winning. This was the analysis of 8th round of Turkish Championship.